spring is almost here and you could save a lot of money on roses if you go to big box stores early. This is March 15th in New Jersey. It might be earlier or later depending on where you are. If you're looking for fragrance like I am, we also have to consider how healthy it will be in our gardens. And that depends on our growing zone and what kind of conditions we're going to give it. If you're looking for bigger plants, you can find them later in the season. In New Jersey, that's around the month of May. You could save a lot of money by waiting and looking around locally, but if you're looking for something very specific, you might have to order it online and order it very early in the season before stock sells out. Okay, let's talk about fragrance now. You're going to hear about top fragrant roses I'm growing here in New Jersey. This is an extremely fragrant rose. It's pronounced Gertrude Jekyll. It's named after a famous horticulturalist and garden designer, among other talents. This is the size I started with. And this is what two years of growth looks like. The scent is described as old rose or damask. It gets morning sun and then after around 12 or 1 o'clock, only the top part gets sun. Maybe that's why it looks nicer on top. It has a strong, intense pink color on the inside and gently fades to a softer, lighter pink on the outside. To the right, that yellow rose is Crown Princess Margarita struggling in the shade. It has a nice fragrance, but it's nowhere near the strength of this one. This tiny one over here is Comte de Chambord. I've read many accounts of this rose, but I've never smelled the rose personally. It's supposed to be one of the most fragrant roses ever. This other puny rose is also supposed to be very fragrant. It's called Rose de Rest, and it's my first time growing it. When we first moved here a few years ago, in the deep shade over here, there was actually a rose barely alive. So I just ignored it and left it be. Well, one summer, I smelled the most wonderful smell I've ever experienced, and it turns out it was that rose. And that was where all my interest in fragrant roses began, from just two or three flowers on this one cane. If you're wondering the name of this rose, I have good news. When I was transplanting it, I saw at the base of the plant, practically strangling it, was the label. It's called Bonita Renaissance. So I transplanted that rose into a sunnier location. I've never seen bees go after a rose so intensely. I don't even like orange roses, but the fragrance was like out of this world. I guess me and these bees have something in common. Now I have it protected in a much sunnier spot. The weird thing is it wasn't as fragrant here, but I know it can be extremely fragrant, so I'm going to see how it does over the years as it gets stronger. This rose is a David Austin rose called The Poet's Wife. It's advertised as very fragrant, and I have to say it really is. The fragrance is very fruity. It's still a new introduction in my garden, so I can't fairly judge its health yet. I've heard a lot about the fragrance of this one, and I saw it in person at a rose garden. It had a nice fragrance, so I wanted to try it at home. I'll let you know how that goes in summer. On the front two sides of the gazebo, I have Abraham Darby Rose, which is also very fragrant. It's so beautiful as well. Petal packed, interesting color changes. Once we build the pergola, I'll move these roses so they're at the posts. It's not the healthiest, it's not the easiest to find, but the fragrance is so good. This beautiful one is Raspberry Cupcake. It was the most fragrant rose I've smelled in an entire rose garden full of hundreds of roses. I've planted a couple of these in the garden, so I'm looking forward to see how they perform this year and sharing that with you. If you want a really easy, healthy rose with fragrance, this is the one you should get. It's kind of like a knockout rose, but with fragrance. It's Brinda Bella Purple Prince. For me, the color ranges from purple to fuchsia to a deep, intense pink. 
It's not going to have a zillion petals like those English roses, but it can hold its own. The good fragrance and health really surprised me. It seems to take very well to pruning too, which is nice because I think I'd want to give it a rounder shape in the future. If you'd like to see updates on these roses and more roses, and our big pergola project with even more climbing roses, please subscribe. I know it's not much to look at now, but I think great things take time.